Hi, good morning and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this new webinar on how to upgrade to MySQL 5.7, where we will walk you through some uh, best practices that um, that we've identified over um, over time, um, based on our experience, of course, in working with MySQL environments. Uh, my name is Jean-Jérôme, and I'll be uh, looking after you today uh, for the next uh, hour or so. Um, if you have any questions uh, during the um, during this webinar, feel free to ask them in the question section of your control panel. Uh, we'll take a few minutes towards the end of the webinar to uh, to answer those questions. And you can always contact me directly as, as well at uh, jj at severalnines.com uh, during or after the webinar for any follow-up questions, for example, uh, that you may have as well. Um, we're recording the session today, and we'll be making the recording available to you uh, in just a day or two. Um, so you'll be able to rewatch this um, at your own leisure, of course, if you if you want to. Uh, but it's great to have you with us um, for now today. Um, and um, before I hand over to my Chris, uh, my colleague Christoph, uh, who is going to be presenting uh, on how to upgrade to MySQL 5.7. I wanted to ask uh, all of you uh, a question, uh, and this is to um, uh, to see which version of MySQL you're currently using uh, yourselves. So uh, we've got you know the different um, the different flavors of MySQL listed here. So whether it's um, the Percona branch or the uh, original MySQL, or maybe you're using MariaDB as well. So it'd be great to uh, or some another version that's not listed here, of course. Uh, so that'd be great to see uh, to get your feedback, um, and uh, it'll it'll be nice to see also for for the rest of the webinar uh, which versions everyone is on, to get a good understanding from which versions you may be looking at upgrading to uh, to five point seven. Uh, great. So um, everyone participated. So thanks very much for uh, for taking the time to um, to provide your information here. I'm just going to close this and share the results. Okay, so it looks um, it looks like everyone is a MySQL uh, user uh, for sure between versions 5.5 and 5.6, which makes sense. Um, this is where we see uh, you know, most people looking to upgrade at the moment, and uh, no MariaDB users, at least not for those versions. So that's um, that's interesting to see as well. Any comments on this, Christoph, before you take over? Um, yeah, I mean there are still a lot of MySQL 5.5 uh, out there. So, uh, so while you know you, you cannot really upgrade directly from 5.5 to 5.7, at least at least you shouldn't. Um, we will also include some of the you know, guides, some kind, some kind of some of the tips to, to how you can actually uh, move to those two steps uh, at a single you know, at a single um, process. Because basically, most of the time. The people who are running 5.5 will be the ones who are kind of looking into uh, upgrading to to the latest uh, MySQL 5.7. Great, um, thanks, Christoph. And uh, with that said, I'll hand over to you. Okay, thank you, JJ. Uh, so, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Mm, uh, as JJ said, my name is Christoph Książek, and uh, we'll be uh, talking today about. Uh, best practices uh, covering the um, upgrade to uh, upgrade process to MySQL 5.7. Um, so today uh, we will be talking about the process itself, a couple of steps that are kind of um, well they should be included in this process. So we will start uh, by discussing some of the changes that happened between uh, MySQL 5.6 and 5.7. Uh, especially those changes which are not uh, compatible. So we'll be talking about changes in information schema, also uh, differences in uh, SQL modes, uh, also we'll mention possible issues with the authentication model that has been introduced. Um, next we'll be discussing the um, testing step, because of course you have to test before you upgrade. Uh, so we'll be talking. We'll be covering, you know, designing the test environment. Uh, some tips about building building the test environment, how you can do it. And finally, uh, what kind of tests and you can, you should execute, and what tools you may may help you with this. Um, of course, the upgrade process itself. And then we will conclude by um, saying a couple of words about different tools uh, which may help you 
uh, in the upgrade process. Those tools may be, we, some of them we, we will mention throughout the webinar, some of them uh, not really, but, but still we, we put together a list of things, tools which we find pretty useful uh, in, in running this kind of um, process. Uh, but first of all, uh, I'd like to start with, you know, just to stop a little bit and think why we may want to upgrade. What's the point in upgrading to MySQL 5.7? Um, of course, there are numerous reasons, obviously, and uh, everyone probably have, you know, uh, their own. Um, but we put together like, those three most what we think the most important and most common reasons why people upgrade to a new version of MySQL, not necessarily really to 5.7, but uh, also some of them are pretty generic, as you can as you can see. Um, so first of all, definitely better performance, and this is this is very true for every MySQL version. So uh, because well, at least starting from 5.6 and then it's like 5.7, um, every MySQL, new MySQL release is the fastest MySQL release, which is obviously great. Uh, with 5.7, the only exception uh, is the uh, pretty, I would say, edge case scenario when we're talking about um, single thread workload. In this case, it might be that overhead uh, of new features is too high and it is slower than 5.6. But if we are talking about any kind of concurrency, uh, 5.7 is the fastest MySQL uh, release to date. And also it comes with, you know, all those in integrals, I mean, internals, all those things that were, uh, all those mutexes, all those uh, latches, all those problems which were hunting um, some of the users of the previous versions. Like if you're pushing your MySQL to version to a limit, and you're, you know, hitting uh, internal contentions in, in ODB or in MySQL code. Um, uh, well, usually the only way to actually squeeze more of a performance from your from, from the MySQL is basically to upgrade uh, to a new, better optimized MySQL uh, version. Um, new features. So. Uh, each MySQL, each new MySQL uh, release comes with a list of new features, uh, and some of them are, you know, a, a complete enough reason to uh, go through the upgrade process. So, and, and there are numerous. I mean, many of them, obviously. And again, many of you probably find something else is. I mean, this particular feature is very important for you, but for someone else, there will be something else, of course. Uh, but we put together like those four of them, which we find very important. Uh, first of all, multi-source replication. Uh, so um, MariaDB uh, had it before, obviously, uh, but uh, when we are talking about Oracle uh, or, or Percola server, um, MySQL 5.7 is the first release where you can perform a multi-source application. So basically what you can do is you can uh, slave off multiple masters. This could be, um, this can come handy, for example, when maybe you have uh, multiple clusters, um, each covering some part of a sharded data set, for example, and then you want to uh, run some you know, um, aggregation, aggregated or statistical or, or any kind of other queries which require access to whole set. Of course, you can run queries on every shard and then kind of combine the results. But here now you can, um, at least you can try as long as the performance will follow, but you can try to view the slave which will aggregate, which will replicate from every shard and like kind of combine this whole data into one data set where you can run analytic queries. Um, intra schema par uh, parallel replication. Um, in 5.6, uh, Oracle introduced this uh, schema-based parallelization. So uh, if you had multiple schemas and you had load, you know, if you have load 
kind of distributed across those schemas. Um, you can benefit from some uh, parallelization in your her application. Um, in 5.7, this limitation uh, was removed, was, uh, and we have, along with this new method, the logical clock method of parallelization, we can, everyone basically can benefit um, from, uh, from replication and to speed up, uh, speed up the slaves even a little bit. Um, on a buffer pool size. So this is, personally for me, this is really huge because, um, you know, there probably many of you remember those times where you had to, you know, uh, restart every slave, every, and then fail over just because someone, well, un underestimated uh, the memory footprint of your MySQL uh, databases. And basically, uh, you had to restart. Uh, everything just because to you know you need to remove um, to to, do, uh, to to decrease uh, the buffer pool by one gigabyte or, or something like that. Um, so right now with MySQL 5.7, uh, this is no longer needed, and you can change this variable uh, you know uh, in the runtime, which is obviously amazing. Um, so another thing improved optimizer cost model. So, um, so far, uh, the optimizer was pretty uh, fixed. So, if we're talking about the cost of the operations, they were, um, they were fixed, they were hard-coded. And, um, and basically, they were kind of tweaked for, with the pretty old um, type of hardware in mind. I'm especially talking about the IO access. So the IO access was kind of uh, tuned with the spindles, uh, SAS, SCSI drives in mind. Uh, of course, IO access can be more or less expensive depending on the hardware, right? You, can co you can't compare spindles with PCI Express SSDs, for example. Uh, right now in 5.7, you can make some tweaks here. And uh, you can tweak the, uh, the optimizer to to be more so to to take your hardware under consideration. And of course, it's also improved. So, uh, so so query plans should be more stable, should be more optimal, um, so on and so forth. And of course, uh, last but not least, uh, you know, access to security and bug fix releases. So the support for MySQL 5.5 is kind of closing. Uh, ending and therefore, if you want to, you know, be in touch with latest fixes, latest uh, updates, well, you will have to, uh, you will have to upgrade to, to a newer MySQL version, 5.6, or even just skip this, uh, skip this version, and and basically move to uh, 5.7 in the end. Okay, so uh, when we're talking about the upgrade process, uh, as I said, there are a couple of steps, right? And the first, the first step will be basically uh, reviewing changes which were which happened, uh, which were introduced between the old and new MySQL version. And uh, what is important here? Uh, so, because the, we were talking kind of like uh, of, of, of upgrading to MySQL 5.7, um, and um, from Oracle side, the uh, the only supported upgrade process is one a major version at a time. So we are looking here at the changes uh, that happened between 5.6 and 5.7. If you think, if if you plan to upgrade from MySQL 5.5 you need to do it in two steps. You first have to upgrade to 5.6 and then upgrade to 5.7. So the upgrade process itself can be kind of combined. Uh, this is not a big deal. Testing process can be kind of combined. Uh, but if you're talking about, you know, reviewing the changes, you have to go through both lists. A list of changes from 5.5 to 5.6 and 5.6 to 